is up, all you face-off fanatics, and welcome back to the Face-Off Zone podcast, a podcast dedicated solely to the face-off position. I'm your host, John Bodner, and I'll be breaking down and covering all the big face-off storylines of this upcoming NCAA lacrosse season. On this episode, I'm going to break down the Big Ten Conference. If you didn't listen to last week, I broke down the ACC. We're going to get into the Big Ten today. I am very fired up to talk about it. And we're going to go over all the heavy hitters on each team. So if you haven't already, please give Face Off Zone a subscribe on YouTube or a follow on Instagram so you can see all the upcoming full game Face Off highlights I plan on showing this upcoming season. So let's get this thing going and let's dive deep into the zone. All right, so let's get right into it. I don't want to waste anybody's time. Again, we're breaking down the Big Ten Conference this episode. A lot of really good teams in the Big Ten, a lot of really good face-off guys, so I'm extremely excited. I did, if you listened to the first episode, I did kind of already break down Penn State. They're one of my main teams who I believe have kind of the biggest question mark at, at face-off going into this upcoming 2022 season, losing uh, you know, super senior Gerard Arceri. Uh, I, I, you know, really to, to sum it up, I do believe we're going to see a heavy dose of senior Jake Glatz, who has served as Arceri's backup for a couple of years now and has certainly um, stepped in for Gerard when he's struggled and has done well. Uh, they have a couple younger guys on the roster at Penn State as well who are good, but I, I just, if I'm a betting man, I, I think. You know, we kind of see Jake Glatz come right out of the bat swinging and we'll see how it, you know, we'll see how it shakes out. So I'm not going to dive too deep into Penn State. Again, uh, please listen to the first episode if you want to hear more about the Nittany Lions. But let's let's get into another team here. Let's let's talk about the University of Michigan. Michigan last season, they were three and nine. Record doesn't do it really do it justice. I mean, they played a couple of these Big Ten teams really, really close last year. They lost. Um, they beat. They did. They did beat Ohio State in the Big Ten tourney, which was huge uh, in the first round. Uh, they played Rutgers tough. I think they lost by one. Uh, they lost in overtime to Penn State, so they were right there, you know, with some, with some of these other Big Ten teams. And it seems like they're bringing a lot of guys back. They're going to take a step up this year, I believe. They're they're going to, and if you look at their grad classes they have coming in, I mean they're they're reloading. So Michigan's a team certainly who I believe is on the rise. And let's talk about their faceoff guys. Uh, let's start let's start with junior Nick Rowlett, who had an amazing season last year, uh, all things considered. Nick Rowlett's a guy who his freshman year he tore up his knee, and then the, the following year COVID happened. And to be honest with you, at the beginning of the season, I, I I was very curious about Nick Rowlett and how he would look, you know, coming out against the the, the Justin Anasios at Ohio State and the Gerard Arceris at Penn State and and Shockey and and at 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 Maryland and I I I wasn't really sure what how he would do and he completely exceeded my expectations. I mean. Proof is in the pudding here. I mean, he was first team all Big Ten last season, and he was the MGoBlue.com male breakthrough athlete of the year at Michigan, which is uh, unbelievable. He played in every game. He took 320 faceoffs, won 172 of them for 54%. He had 100 ground balls, which is the University of Michigan single season record, scored three goals, had a had a really sick goal that I posted uh, as one of the top 10 goals of, of 2021. If you haven't seen it owns a, uh, he, he, listen, he broke a couple more face off records that we won't really get into, but he, listen, unbelievable season. He's coming back. I, I expect him to really take another leap up this year. He's going to be a lot more confident. I know he's working really hard. Um, extremely hard worker he's tough really tough um so i'm ex- i'm very excited to watch nick rowlett this year he is going to be uh the real deal um he's a you know he's a dc guy went to that robinson secondary school down there in virginia 
he's yeah he'll be must watch you know him against Justin Anasio at, at Ohio State will be you know that that's one certainly I have circled um so Nick Rowlett let's let's move down the roster here because they have some other really good guys too um let's talk about Justin Wheatfield Justin Wheatfield uh all all things I'm hearing will will serve kind of come out as number uh, as the number two at Michigan this upcoming season, but it's like almost like one A one B. I mean, Wheatfield is I've seen him play. He's extreme. He's just one of those guys who just has that just uh, crazy crazy speed. And he, he's a new can new cane in Connecticut guy. Played in eight games last year. He only took twenty five faceoffs. I expect him to take probably more this year with, you know, just with, with these, with every, with every team playing more games this season, I do believe we'll see more of we felt he was a four-star recruit number 31 overall in the, in the 2020, I think he was the class of 2020 number 31 in the NLF recruits. He was high up there as well on inside lacrosse, 82%. You know his senior year in high school. He's a little bit different build than than Rallette. He's a little taller. He's about six one, one eighty. The roster says here, and again, he can just get the ball out extremely fast. So um, he kind of has that like forward first mentality. And it, you know, again, if somebody can match his speed, he'll adjust and you know exit in um, going out the back or a quick exit. But we felt I, I know he's another guy that I'm. I'm excited to watch um if Rallet you know needs a blow or 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 whatever uh maybe maybe they'll throw out we felt you know in in some of these big 10 games just for just for matchup purposes um so we felt is certainly a guy that I'm I'm very excited to watch let's move down this roster here let's talk about let's talk about a pair of freshmen they have both kids I've I've seen before let's start with the uh Mattis or Matisse Cole? I I apologize. I, I I always I always say Mattis, but I, I don't think I'm saying that right. But anyway, he's a uh, freshman. He's from Deerfield Academy in Massachusetts. His high school team was the number one ranked high school team in the country. Deerfield. They had an in, insane season last year. Um, Cole was seventy percent. He actually kind of reminded me. I. I I've watched him before. He kind of had like he reminds me of Zach Cole a little bit at St. Joe's. He's you know super athletic. He had twelve goals, four assists. Uh, again, he played for the number one high school team in 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 the country last year. So certainly he's he knows how to. T- he, he's taken high level faceoffs already. Um, I, I've heard he's kind of jumped in up there at uh, up in Michigan, and he's you know he's holding his own. So. I, I'm sure you know he might he might get some opportunities early this this season. We'll see, but he's a guy that I I, I imagine in a year or two I'll be certainly talking about more. Uh, and then they have another kid, Nick Louderback, another freshman. He's a Michigan kid. He's from Northville High School. I watched a, I watched actually some of his football tape, and he's he's another one of those like crazy athletic kids. He was you know. He, he, I, I saw that one year he got all conference as a quarterback, and then like the next year he was all conference as a running back. So he's just one of those kind of, just one of those athletic freaks. And he played club for the Juice Cherries, which is a which is a very good club. Racked up a bunch of those fancy club honors I see here. Um, it, again, you know, he didn't play for as high of a, you know, uh, as high of a, of a high school team as as Cole did but so I'm sure he's probably adjusting to the Big Ten kind of practice regimen a little bit more than than Cole but again I'm just kind of speculating here I'm just kind of going by by what I'm seeing I have no idea what's going on in practice Um, but they certainly have they're in good hands Michigan is in good hands uh, for the future it as far as face-off goes with these two guys. And then they have a couple really good kids coming in in the next couple of years as well. So, listen, you know, Michigan, I'm looking at their schedule. They have some really good, uh, obviously, before they get into the Big Ten heavy hitters, 
I mean, they're playing Harvard. They're playing Notre Dame. They're playing Delaware. I like the, the even the Moscow kid at Cleveland State's pretty good. So they have some good early tests. Um, we'll see how it all shakes out. Like I said, I do think Michigan as a whole is going to kind of take that next step. They have the the returning first first team all Big Ten face off specialist in Rowlett, so we're gonna see. I, I'm 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 predicting Rowlett's gonna have another monster season. I do. He he's a junior. I I do hear he's taken that second that second year. So I think he's got two more years left at Michigan. So um, Michigan is just they're gonna be stacked at the face off position. So. Michigan is the first team I'm kind of diving into here. Let's let's see how it all shakes out up there at Ann Arbor. And let's talk about, we're going to get into Ohio State next here. All right, so let's get into our next Big Ten team here. And let's talk about the Ohio State Buckeyes. The Ohio State Buckeyes, I mean... Four and seven last season. They didn't make the NCAA tournament. They did make the Big Ten tournament. They lost first round to Michigan. Ohio State, I mean, what what's kind of happened to Ohio State? Let's let's talk about Ohio State real quick. Five years ago, they made it to the NCAA final and they just seemed like they had everything going for them. And they they've had some amazing players through the years. I mean, they lost Trey LeClaire and and Tara Fanko this this past season, but they just haven't really – it's shocking to me that Ohio State hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since that championship run. Uh, that's just crazy to me. And I – you know, I, I – I, it's certainly – I, you know, say what you will about the Ohio State Buckeyes, but facing off certainly hasn't been one of their problems uh, these past – I don't know, four or five years since uh, since Withers and and that team uh, lost in the in the final. Um, let's kind of get into this upcoming season um, and and let's talk about some of Ohio State's face off guys here. Obviously, we're going to start with super senior Justin Anasio. Justin Anasio has taken his fifth year. He's been the primary uh, face off guy for Ohio State for years now kind of like a Gerard Arceri almost. I mean, he's taken 873, 873 face-offs going into this season. Just an absurd number of face-offs. He's, you know, a Hill Academy up in uh, up in Canada legend. You know, we, we all know uh, Ohio State loves the Canadians, and he's um, he's been their guy since he, you know, pretty much since he's shown up. And he is, you know, he's Nick Meyer's comfort blanket. You know, he's... Um, and he's earned it. I mean, he's, you know, he's Ohio State's active career leader in ground balls with 259. He was second in the Big Ten last season in faceoff percentage at 55%. Took 267 faceoffs last year, won 147 of them. Calgary Roughnecks already took him in the NLL draft, you know, so he'll be playing in the NLL last year. Maybe might even get picked up in the PLL this season. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Justin Anasio didn't have any points last year, I see here, which is shocking to me because he's always kind of provided that spark for Ohio State when they've needed it and and scored some big goals uh, throughout his career. So the fact he didn't have any points last year was uh, a little surprising. I do predict that will definitely change this year. I do think uh, he will, he'll, you know, he'll he'll give the Buckeyes a little added offense. But, you know, he's he's similar, you know, he's similar to like, you know, kind of the situations like, you know, like, like I already said, our at Penn state and like a PD LaSala. I mean, as long as Justin Anasio is healthy, he's going to be the primary guy. And I'll, I'm going to get into some of these other guys that, that Ohio state has on, on this roster, but you know, Justin Anasio, he, you know, he, he, I, I predict he will be the starter coming right out of the gate. Uh, this upcoming season and he's just you know he, he's a warrior i mean he, he's he's a tough dude you know he's 
you know, very fast forward, but I mean, he'll, you know, he's a guy where if there's a, a loose ball out on the ground, he's extremely good, you know, with that Canadian, you know, indoor background, he's very good at very tough on ground balls, picking up ground balls in tight spaces. You know, he's works with withers a lot, you know, out there in Columbus. So as long as he's healthy, you know, he's must watch TV as well. So, I'm I'm curious, you know, Ohio State, I, I, they have a big the big season coming up. I mean, they're not even ranked in the top 20 preseason here, which I, I can't, it, you know, I guess I'm not surprised, but it's just weird to see that, you know, to see, to not see them in the top 20 here. So I, I do predict, you know, I, I'm, I do predict they're going to do, I, I think they're going to do some big things this year, but let, let's. I'm getting off. To, I'm getting off track here. Let's let's move down this roster. Let's talk about a grad uh, grad transfer they picked up. Drew Blanchard. Drew Blanchard played at Hobart the past four years. He had a great season for the Statesman last season. Um, he kind of started off as the number two at Hobart, and as the season went on, he got more and more opportunities, and he. And he kind of ran with it. Um, he took 110 faceoffs last season for Hobart, won 72 of them for 65. percent Had two goals, one assist. I I I was a little interested, you know, before I, uh, you know, before I started talking, I watched, I went on uh, to my YouTube channel and I I watched the Hobart versus Bryant game. Um, from last season, it was like, I think it was their, uh, their conference. I think it might've been the conference game, but, but anyway, I mean, they were playing Bryant and we all know Bryant has some really good faceoff guys, uh, who I will talk about down the road, but Drew Blanchard played Jacob Alexander at Bryant and had a pretty good game. You know, you know, numbers wise, he was 15 of 25, which is really good. But, you know, listen, Blanchard has some, you know, he's very fast, Got the ball out, you know, behind and forward really fast against against Alexander, and he did it mostly against everybody in his conference last year as well. Um, should have had a couple goals in that Bryant game. Uh, he, you know, he had a couple really nice, you know, had a couple close ones. Same with same with Alexander too. I mean, it was it was kind of a shootout in that game. Um, I'm hearing whispers that Blanchard is kind of the number two right now, right behind Inacio, but. I, I won't be surprised at all if we see Blanchard get a bunch of opportunities this year. I mean, listen, uh, Anasio is a warrior, but you know he's taken a ton of faceoffs. You know, I know he's had he's had his share of injuries, and I'm sure they would like to save him too for you know t- to be fresh for the Big Ten and hopefully NCAA tournament this year. So, um, picking up Blanchard, you know, kind of a seasoned veteran, uh, might be just what they needed this season um but drew blanchard is certainly you know a guy that i will be i will be watching if he gets in and i you know i I, again i i don't think he will start over justin anasia i'll be shocked if he does just because you know anasia is just he's been the guy and i know you know he hasn't taken his foot off the gas he's an extremely hard worker anasia but blanchard is definitely i feel like um all you know, all things I'm hearing is uh, kind of that number two right now. So let's move down the roster a little bit. Let's get into um, a pair of juniors. They have uh, James Hogan from Jer- he's a Jersey guy. He's a junior. He only took twelve faceoffs last year. I-, I heard he's like a you know he's like one of those great like locker room guys. Like the whole team loves him. Great teammate. Um, you know, again, in a very tough situation, just kind of being right behind Justin Anasio these past couple of years. Um, you know, kind of like being behind like a LaSalle or an Arceri. Like you just, you know, that when in doubt, the Ohio State coaches are going to roll with, with Anasio. So Hogan hasn't really gotten that many opportunities so far in his career, but you never know. Uh, he was a good athlete. I see, you know, he was a, he was a great football player in high school. So he's, a, he's a, you know, we'll see if he might may or may not get some opportunities this year. We'll see. They also have the, uh, Sam Faber, another another junior from Michigan. Uh, only took nine faceoffs last year. But, 
Um, kind of looks like Captain America here on the roster. He's kind of got that like Captain America look to him. He's uh, shattered a bunch of records at his high school in Michigan, racked up a ton of awards. But again, just being behind an Osseo, you know, you, it, it's 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 going to be tough to play. So we'll see if some of these guys might, you know, again, they're playing more games this year, so you never know. They might get some opportunities. We'll uh, we'll see. And then let's keep going down this roster here. They have um, freshman Matt Fritz from Philadelphia, from Wissahickon High School. I've known Matt Fritz for a while now, um, being that I'm from the Philly area. And, I mean, you look at Matt Fritz, and he's like he's only, he's built like a true face-off guy. I mean, he's 5'7", 165, completely jacked, um, kind of has that wrestling mentality. I mean, he was a wrestler first who kind of turned into a lacrosse player. So he's kind of built perfectly for the position. Um, he's He was first team all state last year in PA for, you know, all American, played in the NLF uh, senior all-star game uh, and did pretty well. He's, you know, I, you know he's certainly battle tested. Uh, he's, you know, he, he's a total grinder. You know, I, if you get locked in a 50, 50 with Fritz, I mean, good luck. You know, he, I mean, he's just so good at staying low to the ground and he's so explosive. Um, he has been working a lot harder at, at just kind of getting the ball out faster, just going forward. So, and when he does get the ball out forward, I mean, he's a total, he can be a, um, a threat with the ball. He scored a, you know, good amount of goals in high school kind of had that, uh, if anybody saw it went totally viral last spring, that, that sick, uh, behind the back goal that, that was like everywhere. But anyway, um, Fritz, I, I heard he kind of, he, hearing rumors that, you know, he, he went out to Columbus this year and he's certainly holding his own. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if I see Matt Fritz out there this spring getting some opportunities, but we'll see, you know, he, again, he has an extremely strong work ethic, work ethic. I know he wants to be great. So, uh, Fritz is another one of those guys who I, I'm confident I'll be talking about more in the future, uh, over there at Ohio state. So, so they, uh, so Ohio State, they've got, you know, four solid guys. Uh, one, two, three, actually five, really. Um, they, they, they certainly have a lot of guys at this, at this position right now. So again, if I'm a betting man, I do believe we're going to see a lot of Justin Anasio this year, but we shall see. Uh, I'm looking at their schedule. I, I cannot wait for this Ohio State UNC game for, for face-off purposes. Uh, that's going to be a great one. They're also playing Harvard, Cornell, ooh, Denver as well. Denver will be good. So they've got some good tests before they get into the Big Ten. I, I But, oh man, I can't wait for that UNC game that Tucci and, and Tyre and against uh, Inacio and, and Blanchard or Fritz or, or you know, it, it'll be it'll be good. That'll be certainly one I have circled here. So, Let's see, you know, Anasio, I, I, I would love to see him kind of go out with a bang. You know, I know Ohio State, it's crazy to me. They haven't been in the NCAA tournament in five years now. So they got to do something this year, and it starts with winning some possessions. So let's see how the Buckeyes, we'll see how it all shakes out for the Buckeyes this, this upcoming season. Um, so that's... We talked Penn State. We talked Ohio State. We are let's let's talk about Hopkins coming up next. All right, so let's get into our next Big Ten team here, and that's John Hopkins. John Hopkins four nine last season made it to the Big Ten championship game, lost in a sick game to Maryland. They are ranked 15th in the preseason top 20. They have a second-year coach, Peter Milliman, who all th- I think all things considered did a great job last year. Have a ton of really good players returning. But uh, let's talk about uh, a huge reason why Hopkins had such a – had such a hot end of end of season was because of their faceoff guy, uh, now senior Matt Naruski. Matt Naruski was red hot at the end of uh, last season for for Hopkins. 
if you guys watched him in the Big Ten tournament, I mean, he was – I'm looking at some of his stats here. I mean, in his final regular season game against Maryland, he was 15 of 23 for 10 ground balls. He kept that going, made it, you know, in the semis of the Big Ten tournament. I believe it was against Rutgers. He was 18 of 23 with 12 ground balls. And then in the Big Ten championship game, he was 13 of 24 with seven ground balls and a goal. So he was extremely hot. And when he's hot, good things come for for Hopkins. I mean, they have a you know, they have another. Their offense is loaded coming up this season, and if he keeps winning, you know, good things are going to be happening for Hopkins. So I'm I'm looking at Naruski, and I watched a little bit of his tape before I uh, started talking here, started started recording, and I didn't realize how big Matt Naruski is. I mean, he's six three. Uh, buck 95. I didn't realize he was that tall, but going back and watching, I mean, he is a big dude. Um, he is when he gets going, I mean, he's, you know, not afraid to use his body and he's, he's tough. And he's a guy that I think if he, I mean, I mean, Christ, if he, if he plays how he, and if he comes out swinging, like he was at the end of this season, I mean, watch out. He's, Definitely a problem after the faceoff as far as transition. I mean, he could take it to the rack and, and score some big goals. He's I, – I, I can't wait to see how he does, you know, against some of these – you know, all these Big Ten guys again. You know, I want to see if he, he keeps these hot – you know, keeps the hot hand going. But Matt Naruski, I, I do believe we're going to see a lot of this upcoming season again. Had a great – he's had a great career at Hopkins so far. I mean, he's taken 531 faceoffs so far in his career – He's won 289 of them, and last season he was 56. He uh, took 200. He took 284 faceoffs, won 160, led the team with 92 ground balls, had a couple goals. That one I mentioned in the uh, Big Ten championship was pretty sick. So Naruski, he's uh, I would imagine going to be their primary guy this upcoming season. But let, let's who knows? Let's talk about some of these other guys. They have a. Um, a uh, fifth year, fifth year guy, Kyle Prouty from New Jersey, super athletic. Uh, can throw a little bit of everything at you. I know he, you know, he's he can counter you really well, and he's a guy that um, if somebody's hot on the whistle, you could throw him in, and he could certainly uh, junk things up and and get you. You know, he could get you a couple, a couple big ground balls maybe when it matters. So. Kyle Proud is a guy who, again, since Hopkins is playing in more games this season, you know, we may see more of um, going down this roster here. They had a freshman last year, Tyler Dunn, who's now a sophomore. Tyler Dunn, he was a stud at Calvert Hall down there in his high school days uh, in the MIAA. He played in eight games last season for, for Hopkins, and he took 36 faceoffs. He won 13 of them. But he had two. He scored two goals. He had one goal against Ohio State last year and one against Maryland during the regular season, which is which is very impressive. Definitely a, a different build than a uh, Matt Naruski. He's he's shorter. He's five eleven, buck seventy. Um, but he's very quick. You know, he's very fast. He will. I mean, he could. You throw him in as a spark, and he could get you maybe. You know an assist or a goal, you know, and, and if, if, if you need it, um, he's a guy that I could certainly see, you know, if, if Naruski is struggling or, or, uh, Proudy struggling, I, I could see Dunn being another option, you know, depending on the matchup, depending on who they're playing, uh, Dunn could be an issue for, for some of these other teams. So Tyler Dunn's another guy on Hopkins here. And then they have a freshman in, uh, Logan Callahan and, Logan Callahan, they kind of scooped him up late, you know, in his high school career. Uh, they they picked him up his senior year, which most guys they kind of get uh, they commit their junior year now. But they picked up Logan Callahan kind of late, and I'm not surprised. I, I mean, he's he's from Victor, New York. He went to Victor High School, and if anybody knows about Victor, New York, they know that that uh, that some guy named T.D. Erlin went there. 
it's kind of the house that TD built. And TD is kind of um, everything I'm hearing. Uh, TD is kind of Logan's mentor. Uh, they work a lot together uh, on, you know, when, when they're in New York. And listen, if, you know, if you're considered TD's mentor, I have to imagine that you're legit. I mean, I know he's legit. I mean, I'm looking at all of his high school achievements here. I mean, he was the Section 5 Offensive offensive Player of the Year. He was the Monroe County Player of the Year as a face-off guy. So I, I, clearly he wasn't just a face-off guy. He was doing more as well, probably uh, staying on the field. I mean, I, listen, you know, I have to imagine that he's he's he, he's – down in Baltimore right now competing with some of these other guys, you know, they're, I would love to see how, you know, how he, you know, holds his own against Don and Prouty and, and Naruski, but you never know, you know, maybe, maybe he may get some opportunities this season. It's a longer, it's a longer, more games. So Logan Callahan, he's a guy that I, I, again, I predict I'll be, talking about him more and, and done more um, the next couple years at, at Hopkins. So, man, they have – I mean, all, I, so as you guys can kind of hear, they, they have four really good guys, Hopkins. And I'm looking at their com- at their schedule here, and before they get into the Big Ten heavy hitters, I mean, they're playing Loyola. They're playing UNC. They're playing Georgetown. Um. They're playing UVA, Syracuse. I mean, wow. Their out-of-conference schedule is ridiculous. Um, so we'll, we're, we're certainly going to see what Hopkins is made of early. And, if again, if Naruski plays like how he did at the end of the season, he could be, you know, he, he could have an All-American type so I, you know, he may be an all American this year. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, especially, I mean, if he runs the table against in, in some of these out of conference games and then keeps it going, that will be something else. So we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to see how Hopkins does this year. I will certainly be keeping my eye on it. So that's all I got on Hopkins. Let's let's dive into Rutgers coming up next. All right, so let's get into our next Big Ten team here, and that's Rutgers. Rutgers, I mean, they had a breakout year last year. They were nine and four, made it to the NCAA quarterfinals, lost to UNC, looked great all season long. They're this upcoming season, they look very solid. I mean, they're it looks like ninth or tenth in all these preseason uh, top twenty polls. And listen, I mean, let's let's get into their faceoff guys. Let's start with junior Jonathan Dugenio, who started. He was their starter last season. He transferred in from St. John's University, so he was a sophomore last year. Played his freshman year at St. John's. Came in. And all things, I listen. All things considered, I think he did a great job. He was a little hot and cold. You know, he started off the season really hot. I mean, I remember he played Gerard Arceri pretty tough at Penn State. He played um, Justin Inacio at Ohio State pretty tough in those first, you know, those first couple games last season. And I was like, who is this kid? You know, and I, I did a little research on him and he had a great freshman year at, at St. John's. And to be honest with you, I, you know, I, 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 he, yeah, I mean, he shocked me, you know, definitely early on in the season, but kind of, you know, was a little hot and cold towards the end of the season. But listen, I mean, all things considered, you, you, you transfer in to a school like Rutgers and to just kind of, start right from the very beginning. I mean, he, he certainly held his own. Um, he ended up around 40% on the season. He was 106 of 268 face-offs. He had 47 ground balls. He still had, yeah, he had three goals and seven assists. I mean, he, in a blink of an eye, I mean, like Degenio, he could get the ball out forward and he could really make you pay. I mean, seven assists. I mean, he was, he was blowing past some guys and just hitting that 
hitting that uh, point attack, man, and they were just burying goals, I remember, all season long. So to Genio, he's like a little – he's like a smaller guy. He's 5'8", 175, but certainly plays tough. He'll chase you down. I mean, after face-offs, if he loses, he's um, – He's like the Energizer Bunny almost. I mean, he just doesn't give up. So, again, it was his first year starting, you know, in the Big Ten. So, you know, after playing a season at St. John's, so you got to – I got to tip my cap to him. I mean, he really uh, surprised me, and and I'm sure he surprised other people last last season, uh, all things considered. So, DeGenio is a guy who – confident we're going to see a lot of this upcoming season after you know a whole year under his belt playing in the big 10 he's certainly going to be a lot more confident this upcoming season so stay tuned you know we still have a lot more of jonathan degenio to see but they did bring in a grad transfer um and this is this is an interesting one they they brought in sam steven Sam Stevens spent the last four years, had an incredible uh, career at Mount St. Mary's. And Sam Steven, he's a Jersey guy. He went to high school in Jersey. He's back in his roots now in Rutgers, probably loving life down there. I know he's loving life down there. And uh, I knew Sam growing up. He's a South Jersey guy, phenomenal kid. He's uh, He was a late bloomer in high school, and that's why, you know, he was he was a really good soccer player. He almost he probably could have went D one for soccer, but um, decided to play lacrosse. and And Mount St. Mary scooped him up kind of late, and kind of the rest was history. I mean, he showed up to Mount St. Mary's and just was the guy right from the start. I mean, he took one thousand and eight career faceoffs at the Mount, so he has a thousand faceoffs under his belt. So certainly a seasoned veteran um, was an academic all American at the Mount. Yeah. Like I said, crazy athlete, um, you know, and he's a beast on ground balls. I mean, I, listen, after the faceoff, he's a guy that you better be careful how you're exiting against Sam Steven. If you're, you know, if you're going forward on Sam and you're, you kind of pop that ball up a little, you know, a little too far, He's going to make you pay. He will. He's like Deion Sanders. He's going to, he's going to intercept your ball. He's going to intercept your pullout. So, um, I don't listen. I don't, uh, I should have probably, probably shouldn't have said that, but, but, uh, I don't want to give out any, any, um, scouting secrets here, but I mean, the tape doesn't lie. I mean, you know, Sam Steven is a total athlete. So, uh, he had some battles, you know, in his college career against some some good players here against like James Riley at Sto- at Georgetown. They played a couple times. Zach Cole at St. Joe's, the Hobart guys. So, listen, he's you know, like I said, he's he's got over a thousand faceoffs in his career. He's certainly battle tested. I think putting him on a Big Ten team now with Big Ten, you know, long stick middies and short stick D mids it could be a game changer for him. Um, the Mount was certainly very lucky to have him for four years, but to be honest, I always kind of thought he certainly could have played for a better team. Um, and now he kind of has that shot. You know, he, he graduated, he was a two time captain at Mount, but now he's, you know, he wanted to test the waters and, and Rutgers has given him a chance. And I think um, he, you know, he kind of wants to end his career on uh, and, and make some noise. So, don't be surprised if we see Sam Steven a lot this upcoming season for, for Rutgers as well. I'm, I know he is certainly battling DeGenio right now down there in Jersey at practice. And who knows, depending on matchups, depending on who they're playing, um, you know, we could see both of them. So let's keep moving down the list here. Let's talk about senior Mike Ott, another Philly guy. Mike Ott, he – Another guy who can throw a little bit of everything at you. He he has great stick skills. Mike got he got in a couple times um, last season. He was six of eight against Penn State last year. He only took thirty four faceoffs, one fifteen of them for forty four percent. But um, Mike got's another guy. I mean, like I said, he has great stick skills, so he's not really a uh, big liability on the field. Who knows? Depending on matchups, I saw Ott recently. I think he's in the best shape that I've I've seen him in 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 the four years at Rutgers. So, would not be surprised at all if if we see Ott a little bit this upcoming season. Um, 
They got a couple other guys here. They have senior Mariah uh, Yusefi, who took 60 faceoffs last year. He was 24 of 60. He was 12 of 24 against Maryland during the regular season back in March, which is impressive. So he was a Hartford Community College guy his first two years of college and um, transferred over to Rutgers. You know, throw him in the mix. I, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't know too much about him, but you know, all on, you know, took sixty faceoffs, so he's um, he's certainly, you know, he's he's tested. So we might we might see a little bit of him. And then they picked up a freshman, Luke uh, Ramanek, Romanek, from he's a New Hampshire guy, New Hampton, New Hampshire, and. All American in high school, you know, his bio says he was ninety six percent face off percentage last season in twenty twenty one. I I that's ninety six percent. I mean, that's uh that's pretty insane, ninety six percent. So I don't know what kind of competition he was playing against, but I don't know. Ninety six percent is still pretty unconscious. So good for Roman Romanek here. Um he was a team captain. He was all league running back in football. So he's a good athlete, you know, um, who knows, you know, I, I think, you know, he, listen, him kind of going up against Sam Steven and, and all these other guys um, is certainly, I mean, he's learning. God only knows what, you know, all the great advice he's going to get this, this upcoming season for, you know, at Rutgers and, you know, hopefully he's a guy that I'll be talking about uh, the next couple of years, you know, for the Scarlet Knights. So we'll see. You know, maybe he'll get some opportunities. Time will tell. Um, but Rutgers, man, I mean, they're they're going to be fun to watch this year. I'm looking, you know, let's let's look at their schedule here. They're playing Marist. That'll be a good one early. They're playing Loyola, uh, Princeton. Ooh, that's going to be good. The Battle of New Jersey. And then they got Hofstra. So a couple good – couple good – out of conference matchups before they get into the Big Ten, but you know, again, if, if I'm a betting man, I, you know, I, I think we'll see a lot of Degenio and, and Sam Steven. Um, but we'll see. You know, again, it's all about the matchups. It's all about the matchups this year, and it's a long season. So, um, hopefully, you know, these these all these Big Ten teams don't kind of ride out the same guy because. You know, it's by the time we get to the Big Ten and NCAAs, I mean, you know, they might not have any gas left. So um, we'll see how it all shakes out. So that's all I got on Rutgers. I can't wait to watch them. And coming up next here, save kind of, you know, me personally, this is my my personal opinion, kind of save the best for last here. We got the uh, Maryland Terrapins. Coming up next, you're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned. All right, so let's get into our final Big Ten team here, and let's talk about the University of Maryland. I mean, what can you say about them? University of Maryland, they're kind of like the equivalent right now of Alabama football. You know, we just all expect Maryland to just – make it to the final four every year, make it to the championship. They've just, you know, they have that be the best mentality and they seem to always be there at the end of every, every season. So Maryland don't look like they're slowing down at all anytime soon. I mean, they're ranked number two in all the preseason polls right now. They picked up a ton of really good players in the, in the transfer portal. I know they lost to Oraton winner, Jared Bernhardt, but, Trust me, they still have some serious playmakers on offense. So Maryland's a team, if they're winning faceoffs, they're going to be extremely dangerous this year. And they have some good players. Let's, let's get into a pair of juniors they have uh, at faceoff here. Let's start with Luke Weirman. Luke Weirman, Westchester, Pennsylvania kid. He's... Just absolutely, there was zero talk about Luke Weirman going this time last year. Nobody really knew about him. He was the whole story about how Luke Weirman even got to Maryland is is pretty wild. Um, Luke Weirman, Luke Weirman was originally a Fairfield University commit. He did not commit to Maryland until like after Memorial Day of his senior year. Um, 
he had a monster senior season. He had 28 goals, 30 assists for his high school team, all American, just an absolute animal. Um, played a lot of offense, so he wasn't really like a face-off specialist specialist. Like he stayed on the field a lot. But long story short, his um, Andy Copeland, who was the Fairfield coach, ended up leaving. Um, he, he left Fairfield that spring, and Weirman asked for a release, and luckily he got one. Fairfield was nice enough to release him, and long story short, Maryland scooped him up late in you know in in in, in Weirman's senior year, and. The, the kind of the rest is history. I mean, Weirman has worked extremely hard. I think the new rule changes, um, s- switching from knee down to stand up, has really benefited Weirman because you have to be, you know, obviously you need to have strong stick skills and and be reliable on the field after the face off. And Weirman certainly fits that category. Um, Luke Weirman, like I said, was the last recruit in that class of 2019 and they had a really good face-off guy in in the class of 2019 uh with luke um connor calderon who you know he was like on the u19 team at the time i mean he was he was like a five-star recruit and weirman eventually i mean it kind of kind of hurtled him and you know calderon transferred over this past summer to to bu and I'll certainly talk about um, him and the rest of the Patriot League um, down the road. But Weirman, like I said, worked really hard um, and got a lot of opportunities this past spring. I mean, they Maryland rolled out uh, Justin Shockey as their as their starter last season, but there were certainly and and Shockey has now moved on. He's graduated. Um, he had a great career, Shockey, great career at Maryland. But uh, at times this season, when Shockey did struggle, uh, they seemed to go right to Luke Weirman, and he came in and and held his own. Um, let's let's talk about his stats a little bit here. Uh, he, I mean, he was huge in some big moments last season. I mean, um, it, if anybody watched the Notre Dame game uh, when Maryland played Notre Dame in the NCAA quarterfinals, I mean, Weirman had a uh, I mean, that amazing play where he ended up with an assist. He chased, you know, he lost the face off to Kyle Gallagher, chased him down, stripped him, stayed on the field, ended up catching a pass right at like the midline and just faked out, you know, ran down the field, faked out the defense with his eyes, ended up with an assist. It was wild. Um, he just, you know, he seemed to win some big faceoffs when it when it mattered. And he ended up winning that overtime faceoff. He smoked, smoked Gallagher on that overtime faceoff, uh, which was uh, very impressive for, you know, a guy who had um, really little to no experience going into, going into this season. So um, he's, you know, certainly adjusted well. He, I mean, uh, talk about the national championship, you know, PD LaSalle, I, I, I dive deep into PD LaSalle last, last, last week, but, in that national championship game, I mean, Luke Weirman came in off the bench and won 14 faceoffs. Um, you know, kind of came in, kind of came in cold and and held his own. I mean, it. You know, everyone remembers kind of Weirman's shot to you know almost tie it up at the end of the game, but I, you know, I, I don't know. You, you give Weirman that shot again, I do believe um, things could have went a little bit differently, but. At the end of the day, he did everything he could to try to help that team come back. I mean, they were down a bunch of goals at one point, and uh, Luke did a great job winning some possessions to make that game close. But, you know, I I think Luke Weirman's a guy that, you know, now that he had last season, he took a bunch of face-offs. He took took 192 face-offs last year. He's certainly going to come back into this season a lot more confident. Um, I, I predict, you know, I think he's poised to have a big spring. So Weirman's definitely an interesting one. You know, he certainly has his work cut out for him with all these other, you know, big 10 guys that we talked about, but we'll see how, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but let's talk about another junior they picked up, um, another Philly guy, 
They picked up, um, I mentioned him in the last episode as well. They have a transfer in Gavin Ty. Gavin Ty served as PD LaSalle's backup the past two years. And, you know, it, it's a it's a tough job, you know, because PD LaSalle, he's one of the best. And it, it's it's hard to get a shot when, when you know, when you're LaSalle's backup. So Gavin Ty, he... I'll wait till I read off some of his high school stats here, but you know, he got in a couple, you know, so he played two years at Virginia, uh, played in 10 of UVA's 18 games last year. He was 25 of, he took 53 faceoffs. He was 25 of 53 for 77%. Um, you know, decided to make a change, you know, with, you know, I, I, I can understand it. You know, PD LaSalle still has two more years at UVA and, Gavin Ty is a competitor, you know, he wants a, uh, really, you know, he wants a fair shot at playing and, you know, uh, we'll see, we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes for him this upcoming season. I mean, listen, he's the most, he's probably one of the most decorated high school faceoff guys ever. You know, he holds the most career faceoff wins in, in high school across history. I mean, he's a, with a 1,297 faceoff wins. He was a five-year starter in in um, in the Interact, which is a you know one of the strongest conferences and you know in in high school across. In my opinion, he started for five years uh, at Penn, William Penn Charter School, um, two-time you know All-American, four-time All Interact. I mean, he's a beast. Um, he's six-one, two twenty-five. I mean, he you know he's one of those guys who looks like he could be playing you know, football for Maryland right now. He's extremely strong, um, extremely aggressive after the face-off. I mean, he will run you over if you're not ready for him, if you're not ready for it. Um, so, listen, I mean, Gavin Ty certainly, you know, he has a lot more he wants to prove. He is a fierce competitor. The dude, run, yeah, like I said, he runs like a tank. Um, I, I mean, listen, he could, you know, I was reading some articles on Ty, you know, and, and some quotes from, from Lars Tiffany at Virginia. And, you know, he said that, you know, Ty was one of their best short stick D mids last year. You know, I mean, he, he probably could have um, gotten some time at short stick D mid. He, he's just that athletic. Um, he's, he's a, he's a legit lacrosse player, Gavin Ty. So Gavin Ty is another guy who, you throw him in with Weirman and they could be like a two headed monster this season. I mean, they, I, you know, you look at Notre Dame last season, you know, with Charlie Leonard and, and Kyle Gallagher, there's no reason for me to believe that if Maryland's kind of smart about it, that they can kind of, um, they could, they, they, they could kind of be the same type of, of duo, um, depending on who they're playing. So, I mean, what a what a duo of juniors there with with Luke Wehrman and Gavin Ty. So we're definitely I'm I'm very very interested to see how how things go there. They have um, like I said they lost Connor Calderon to he ended up transferring to Boston U over the summer. Uh, they had a um, Justin Shockey, a senior graduated. Joel Truxis, another senior graduated. So. They have the pair of juniors, and then they have this uh, freshman in from Ohio, uh, Shea Keithler. Um, oh, and before I talk about Keithler, they do have a kind of do-it-all midi, this guy Michael Roach, who, uh, you know, I've seen him up in the New England. He trains, you know, he was training with, with Nardella. He's kind of like a do-it-all kind of midfielder. I don't know how much we're really going to see of him, but – you know, you never know. He, you know, he, he's definitely worth mentioning. Um, he is, from everything I hear, a, a really good athlete. So you throw him in the mix. And then, like I said, they have a freshman, uh, Shea Keithler from uh, Ohio. He went to Upper Arlington High School. He was another guy who kind of committed late. Uh, he committed uh, his senior year of high school last year. But, um, I, I can see why. I mean, he certainly broke out his senior year. He was the Ohio Player of the Year, first team All State, All American, eighty percent all season long. Um, 
I, I watch uh, Keithler a little bit in the fall against Cornell. He had a nice goal off the faceoff against Cornell. Um, you know, going from Ohio, though, to the Big Ten, especially Maryland, I'm sure is a huge adjustment. And he's kind of still kind of getting his feet um, underwater over there, trying to just, you know, just trying to get used to the pace. And, you know, everything I hear about him, I hear, you know, I hear he certainly looks the part and he's athletic. And, you know, I think once he kind of, like I said, just gets used to this, you know, the pace of a, of a, of a Maryland type program, uh, he's a guy who we could certainly be talking about in the future. So, Maryland, you know, must watch TV. I, I you know, if, uh, if I'm a betting man, I, I think we see a heavy dose of, of Luke Weir, the two juniors, Luke Weirman and Gavin Ty. Um, I, I, I certainly have my eye on Maryland. They're going up to Maryland's going up to Syracuse this year in the dome, and that's going to be wild. Uh, I, I almost want to like fly up there and watch, or we'll drive up there and watch that game, watch that game live. So we'll see, but um. I'm also, you know, they're also playing Georgetown. That'll be a good one, Princeton. So they have some, they have some good out of conference matchups that we'll certainly talk about down the road. But um, wait a second, I, I'm still on Maryland schedule here. I, I can't believe I didn't mention this, but Saturday, March 19th, Maryland is playing a national championship rematch against the University of Virginia. Wow, and that's the last out-of-conference game for Maryland before they get into the Big Ten gauntlet. So, good Lord. I mean, I, I don't even know where the game's being played yet on the schedules here. It still says TBA. But, listen, I don't know what everybody's doing on March 19th, but hopefully you'll be in front of a TV or live at that game. Uh, that will be, you know, can't miss. Uh, and then you also have the storyline of, of Gavin Ty. You know, playing against his former teammates, playing against his, playing against PD LaSala. So I'm sure, um, you know, I, how could you not get fired up for that? So that will be a fun one to watch. We will certainly talk about that down the road. But um, that's pretty much all I got on Maryland here. Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be a fun season watching the Terps. So. Stay tuned, and that's a wrap on my Big Ten kind of breakdown here. So that was a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Next week we're going to get into a couple more conferences. I want to get into you know there's still we still have a lot to kind of preview and talk about. So stay tuned. All right, so that's a wrap on our third episode here of the Face Off Zone podcast. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed that Big Ten breakdown. I. I'm extremely fired up to continue talking about this upcoming 2022 season. So please do me a favor. Tell a fellow face-off fanatic about this podcast. Let's keep this thing going for a while. If you haven't already, please check out my YouTube channel, the Face-Off Zone YouTube channel. Uh, give it a subscribe. That way you can watch some fun, you know, full face-off highlight videos of, the, of this upcoming season. You can also give me a follow on Instagram at fo underscore zone for some fun breakdowns as well. Um, next episode, I'll, I think I'm going to probably get into the Patriot League, maybe the CAA as well. Uh, so stay tuned. It's going to be fun. And as always, I'm going to be hanging around all season long. So until next time, I will see you guys in the zone. <laughs>